Hello lovely people, this week I am back with a book review and the book I'm going to be talking about is The Running Hare, The Secret Life of Farmland by John Lewis Stemple. This is the third John Lewis Stemple book I have read so far and I have really enjoyed every single one of them. Um, I started off with Meadowland and then I read um, The Secret Life of the Oak and now it's The Running Hare. So this is nature writing. What this is focused on is John Lewis Stemple um, essentially rents out a plot of land. So instead of doing what a lot of farmers do, which is um, like you plough twice a year, you use pesticides, that sort of thing, he decides to take this plot of land and he wants to see if he goes back to like traditional methods of farming and stuff like this, sowing wildflowers and stuff, can he tempt hares? To his farmland because to him that's the sign of when you've got like a farmland that's working for like all of the animals involved and stuff so it's essentially like looking at a period of time of this field and how the field grows and how the field changes and the different animals that um he that he entices there and that sort of thing it's really interesting i really really enjoyed it um, i am gonna <laughs> that's the main gist but i will talk about this in more detail um, so essentially, this is the third book I've read of his right by now. This one was interesting because um, Meadowland I found extremely soothing. I read it in autumn when the um, it was turning and we had those glorious like autumnal sunshine days and it was like a lovely soothing experience. This was slightly more stressful at the edges. <laughs> this had a little bit more of a an element of he, I think he says at one point that when he read it back he, he realised that he must have been quite angry when he was writing this book and that did kind of come across. It's not undirected anger, it's sort of this um, anger at like how we've managed to lose so much. So there's a lot of focus in this particular book about um, the, the number of species that we've lost, whether that's of bird or bee or butterfly or you know all of these things and just reading this at the particular time that I read it really made me connect to that anger a little bit I think because I'm reading this in summer when we've just had the hottest day which potentially has ever been recorded in the UK of like 38 or something um and it was a real reminder that like hey <laughs> If we don't start looking after our world, it won't be there for us. Um, so at times, this was a mildly stressful read for me, but in like that way that is, you should be stressed if you're paying attention to like what's going on. It was a really slightly weird reading experience of like on the one hand being like, oh, this is written lovely, this is so interesting, blah blah blah, and then also on the other hand having like a complete crisis about like the state of our ecology, etc. So that was interesting. Um, one thing that I really like about the way that John Lewis Temple writes is that he's not just he do, he's like observing what's going on, he's observing the land, he's observing like um, like he might be focusing on a particular bird, and then he'll like go off on a little travel about that bird, about like the etymology of their name, and um, you know when have they been mentioned in literature and stuff like this. I like the way that he weaves into this. It's not just observing nature. It's also um, observing the linguistics, like how have certain animals developed their nicknames, or um, like literature, like he might quote a poem that is about ploughing or something to show you the way that ploughing used to be done versus how ploughing is done now or something. There's all of these references always. And I think what I like about that is it drives home this idea that we are linked to the land. You know, it's showing you that we have this great history of being, we wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for like farming having developed. So let's look at how farming has been viewed through like different times, through different poems or something. like. This idea that natural history and human history are linked, it's not separate things, one informs the other. And um, as someone who, I like the outdoors, I grew up a bit countryside, I'm not the most outdoorsy person, um, it's quite an accessible way for me, I think, to have a better understanding of if we are talking about we need to have a more harmonious relationship with nature and we need to make sure that we are um, farming sustainably and existing sustainably and something like what does that actually mean because I think sometimes you know it's very easy to get freaked out and be like oh god the world is dying what can I do about it 
for me, one of the things I do about it is I read these things and then I have a better understanding of like, okay, what does a sustainable existence with the earth look like? What does like, you know, so part of what's going on with this field transforming is understanding that like, when he gets there, there's barely any worms, and worms are really important for soil, because if you, worms are like natural tillers of soil. And by the time this book ends and he's checking the worms, there are so many more worms. And it's like those ways that you can measure how something grows and how something changes and stuff. I don't know, that was just, <laughs> it was just really interesting, essentially. That's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. I just sort of wanted to capture this moment I'm having where I'm reading these books and I'm finding it really interesting and informative and it's helping me have a deeper understanding of things. Um, if you're watching this and you're someone who reads a lot of nature writing, I would really like to hear from you if you have any suggestions of other authors to explore because I am quite new to this genre, so it's one that I, um, I'm sort of just exploring John Lewis Temple a bit at the moment. I really liked Hages for Hawk by Helen MacDonald, which was looking at like hawking. I've got like a couple of other things to read, but I don't have a lot, so if you are a person with greater knowledge, please do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. That's about it from me, just wanted to do a little drabble. I hope you're having a nice day. I will see you next week for something different and hopefully a little bit more coherent. <laughs>